The High Tech Nomad here, and today I'm going to talk about Samsung DeX. Now, the biggest question is, can DeX replace your computer? Can you use it as your daily driver? For most people, the light to medium user, it's an unqualified yes. For the heavy user like myself, it's a yes, but there's just a couple of things you're going to have to deal with. So I'm going to go over what those you have to deal with issues are. We're going to go over everything. but. So I replaced my computer. I literally moved my computer off my desk. I set up a Samsung DeX station, which in my case is made up of my 24 inch monitor, my ergonomic keyboard, and of course the DeX itself. I also had to add a Bluetooth speaker and that brings up my first, you're gonna have to learn to deal with it issue, which is the sound from most uh, monitors that have HDMI speakers is not that great. I wish that the Samsung had put in a regular audio output jack so I could just plug my speakers in, but they didn't. So at this point, if I wanna have sound that doesn't absolutely drive me crazy, I have to use my Bluetooth speaker. Now I am experimenting with a couple of um, USB to audio out, and I'll do a review on those as soon as I find one that works decent. So I haven't even had a chance to finish editing this video and I found exactly what we're looking for. This is the Zabrinth USB Stereo 3D Audio Sound Adapter. I have a link for it down in the description. It's $9.95 and it works like a charm. It gets you audio out. I was able to just plug my speakers in and go. I can use the mic input for my lavalier mic, so that's already covered. Uh, I'm using a multiple USB adapter so I can plug in a bunch of things at once, but um, you certainly can use just uh, a standard, uh, just use the two ports that are on the dock if you bid. Now, on with the show. So all of the basics are covered. So for example, word processing, um, Excel, Excel spreadsheet, I guess that's a, not the generic term, but still you get what I'm saying. PowerPoint, all of those are covered. Now you can use uh, anything from something like Hancom Office, which comes with um, your S8, or you can go with Google Docs, or you can even use Microsoft Word. However, the Word that they give you, which is which is the official Microsoft Word, is a read-only version. However, if you have an Office 365 account, which most of us do at this point, that will unlock it and allow you to edit it. So all of the basics are covered. Now, on top of that, you also have all of your programs that you, you get standard with your phone already. So things like uh, email, messenger, gallery, all of those are here, they work fine. It's actually really nice to be able to work on a, an image that I've taken with my phone and actually see it on my, 20, my 24 inch screen and to look at it in that form. So the dock itself also adds, uh, let's see if I can find a picture. The dock itself also adds ethernet speeds. So that's pretty cool. And again, you can see I'm gonna play this little video here real quick okay it's really really nice to uh, be able to take something that I filmed on my phone and be able to edit it and take a look at it on my screen so it's been a couple of weeks so what is my other issue my other issue is that apps don't open up all the way however I'm going to tell you how to get around that right now so when I say apps don't open up all the way Let's take, uh, for example, uh, KineMaster, which is what I use to edit some of these podcasts. And I really like it. However, again, as I've gotten better, hopefully, at making these videos, I really want to edit it on a 24-inch screen, not on my phone. So if I open KineMaster now, as you can see, I get it in this window. I am not able to maximize this window. And while it is better than when I'm working on my phone, it's not much better than when I'm working on it on my tablet. And again, that's because a lot of the apps aren't set yet to talk to Samsung DeX, and so they can't go into full screen. There's a way around that, of course, and that is using a program which is absolutely brilliant. I strongly um, encourage you to support this designer. Uh, he's only asking for like two bucks. I think he could ask five, but you know, take a little and live long, I think is good. And it is called Dex Max. Now, because I get a little tongue tied, I'm not going to keep referring to it as Dex Max. I'm just say Max. So, Dex Max uh, 
is available through um, the Play Store. I'll set the link for you down below. And it basically gives you a couple of different options. So basically it tries to let you run it through its program. It also has an expert mode where it tries to modify the SDK. I played with that a little bit, it's nice. Most times I don't even have to do that, so I'm gonna forget about that. So we're gonna take a look at Max in a second. The other thing that you definitely wanna do as soon as you get this is you wanna turn on developer mode. And you can do that by going into settings, uh, going into Samsung DeX settings and clicking on about Samsung DeX about four or five times, uh, very similar to how you would turn it on on your, on your regular phone. And that will put it into developer mode. And the biggest thing about developer mode is it will add a maximize window to some programs. So between a maximize window to some programs and the max program, you should be pretty much all set. So let's get back to KineMaster, which I said we saw that if we run KineMaster um, normally or without using any additional help, we don't have a maximize window and it only opens in this uh, we don't have a maximize button and it opens up in this window. So now let's, and here's the, the trick for using max by the way. I'm gonna maximize the max window prior to opening Kinney Master. So now I'm gonna go ahead and open up Kinney Master. And bada bum, bada bing, bitty boop. Bob's your uncle, I now have it in full screen and I've been using it to edit podcasts so it does not in any way bother the program. So now I have it full screen, works fine. Um, and that works for just about any other program that you may have an issue with. So let's take a look at one other. I know everybody's a little uh, anxious to see this. So again, let's go into Netflix. And as you can see, again, when we open up Netflix, it's gonna open it up in this window. It doesn't have a maximize button. Uh, however, if we go into max and maximize the window and then run Netflix, Bob's your uncle, we get a full screen version. And it's also a windowed version, and I bring that up because you can actually minimize this and it will continue to play. However, in my case, I really like Netflix to be in a window. Let's just have it in a window off to the side. So between adding that maximize button to your programs and Max, you are pretty much all set at that point. So just about anything you're gonna run at this point is either gonna run now with a, so for example, a Handy Photo, which I like a lot, Net, that now has a maximize window button because I'm in dull upper mode. I can use that in full screen. And then again, any program that doesn't, that I want to run in full screen, I can just go ahead and run that in the max program. So we're all set on all of those. So we've got, we've figured out how to get a, a larger window. We got a, a sort of a workaround for the sound. Like I said, just use a Bluetooth speaker for right now. I will find, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm going to find a USB adapter that gives me audio out, audio in and audio out that works with this. And let's, um, by the way, here's another little thing that I, I had to find on my own, which is if you uh, go down to quick settings, when you have your decks uh, uh, working, you'll see where it says audio output. And here's where you'll see your ability to choose where you want your output. So as you can see right now, I have it my display, so it's, the sound is actually gonna play out through my HDMI monitor. And as you can see, I'm actually using a uh, Samson, not Samsung, but Samson Go mic to record this audio. And that's working just fine. Uh, and it would allow me to do as an output. So I'm fairly certain that I can find a USB solution to this so that we can get both audio out and a good audio input. So if you wanna use your lava lamp mic or what have you. Uh, I haven't tried with like a Blue Yeti or anything like that, but I got a feeling that all of those will work just fine when you're using your decks. So that gives you another thing that is a good reason to have your, your Samsung decks. I know a lot of people doing podcasts. Uh, one of the things that you wanna be careful of is the sound. If you go back and look at some of mine, it sounds like I'm like across the room shouting into the, the microphone. And so having a good microphone may able to plug it in. But instead of having a whole bunch of different adapters, I can now just plug this into my DeX dock. And when I sit down to do these uh, podcasts, I can actually have fairly decent uh, sound. So we've got, um, we were talking about, um, we, we covered the, the piece on that, that bum, 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 bum. Oh, so the other thing I wanted to talk about is, I talked about the medium, the, the power user. As a power user, I still have things that I have to run on Windows. I'm sorry, there are some uh, some 
some applications that just have to do it. Now, I have two solutions for that, or they offer two solutions. The first solution is a cloud-based solution, and the cloud-based solution means that you pay somebody for the ability to tap into a Windows machine. So that's like Citrix Receiver or Amazon Workspaces. I'm gonna do a, a video on those two solutions. My biggest issue with both of those solutions is that there's an additional cost, even if it's 25 bucks a month, that still means you're gonna pay 250 bucks a year. So while you gave up your desktop, you still have to pay out some other money. Now, some people will be fine with it. They're like, look, I'll pay 250 bucks, uh, 250 bucks a year. I'll have an up-to-date Windows machine when I need it. I'm all set, thank you very much. Okay, that's what I'm gonna go with. The other alternative is what I refer to as a headless solution. And a headless solution means you take your old computer, you take your monitor off, you take your keyboard off, you put it someplace. Uh, mine in this case actually happens to be in a, in a basement somewhere and that computer is connected to the internet and I will simply tap into that computer, I'll access that computer when I need it. Now when I looked at all of the programs that were out there like uh, GoToAssist and LogMeIn and Remote Windows Desktop, they all had some different issue. They, they didn't connect properly or the, um, the mouse didn't move, blah blah. So. The one I found is TeamViewer. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. So TeamViewer, which is a free program if you're using it for personal use, you will load that onto your computer, you will load that onto your phone, and now when I need, absolutely need a Windows machine, and Bob's your uncle, I now have a Windows machine that I can access and run whatever apps I absolutely, positively need to run. So let me just close this down a little bit. So I'm obviously in a windowed environment right now. I'm gonna go ahead and maximize this window. And when I go ahead and maximize this window and then click on the little remove button, you can see I have a full, I have a full Windows desktop. And this is super, super, super responsive. So there's no issue with that. I'm able to run whatever program I need to run uh, in the background, uh, run on my Windows machine. And then when I'm done, I can just click on this, bada boom, bada bing, Bob's your uncle, and I am back out of this. And I can actually leave it running in, in the background, by the way. So if I just wanna go ahead and hit this, um, it'll give me a little message here saying that it's still in the background. I can go off and I can do things and come back to this by simply clicking on this. So once you have that solution for what you're gonna do when you absolutely have to run a machine, whether it be the virtual one which I talked about or this solution where you just basically use your old computer just throw it aside but again the question is can it replace your computer yes if I do this then I do not um, you might consider that cheating because I'm saying I obviously I still have access to my old machine but I'm only using it for those items that I absolutely I have to run there are obviously some programs that you have to run but again I'll be doing a review on the um, virtual solutions very shortly. So you wanna go ahead and hit that subscribe button so that you can see that when that comes out. I'm also able to do a couple of things like play games and I only bring that up because, you know, I do need a distraction every now and then. Um, my son loves to play Minecraft. He's usually in the next room and he's always like, you know, will you play Minecraft with me? And so now I actually have the ability to just sort of open a, open a window here, play Minecraft with him, but I'm also continuing to do my own work and I can go back and forth. And again, no issue as far as um, lag or anything like that. I was actually also able to play, let's uh, open Max again, um, Skyforce Reloaded. And I show that because I was just, um, was actually blown away by just um, how responsive it was. Now this is a uh, made for phone app. And you can see the grade in section, which is what I normally would only see. I am seeing some sections off to the side, but I found that that works just fine. I'll just play that for a second. And I'm just using my mouse. So you can see that's really 
very, very responsive. I had no issues with this whatsoever. In fact, actually, I played the game and I enjoyed it, and this was the first time I got to see it on a 24-inch monitor, so I was like, hey, this is actually kind of cool. Now, to get out of this, I'm gonna just push the Windows key on my keyboard, and I'm gonna hit the Home button, and that's actually still running in the background. I was actually surprised by how many programs I could have running in the background and had no issues whatsoever. There was no lag, there was no problem whatsoever. So to sum up, um, we use all these the, the fancy catch words out there. Uh, the Samsung Dex Dock, does it suck? No. Um, is it worth you having? Yes. Will it replace your computer if you so need it to do? Yes. If you have a Windows, if you have a program that needs to run under Windows 10, we've just um, dealt with that particular issue. I actually also like it for programming. Uh, I've been doing a lot of stuff with um, uh, Tasker and a couple other programs out there. I've been using my um, some of the other programs. In any event, what I'm saying is, is I'm able to program in full screen on this and not have any issues. And it's good that I actually have my files with me. Now, the only other issue that I have with this is the price. Uh, $150 is is up there. I think $100 would be fine. I think 50 bucks would be even better. Uh, but definitely if they want adoption, I think they should just bring the price down and I think they need to show it off more than they are showing it off now. I actually went to um, my local carrier and asked for it and they had no idea. They thought it was like a wireless dock or something. And when I explained to them what it was, they were like, wow, that's really neat. So that told me they haven't been pushing it with any of the people they've been selling the phones with because they didn't even know what it did. And this is not just one store. I've gone to several stores and they're, they, you say dock and they say, oh yeah, the wireless dock. No, I'm not talking about the wireless dock. I'm talking about the Dex dock. The Dex dock, you mean just charge your phone? No, it turns it into a computer. It turns it into a computer, so they're, uh, it's, um, they need to educate people a little bit more on that. The other thing I would really, really, really like to see is a laptop version of this. I know that there were some patents that were floating out there from Samsung. I hope they do that with the next one. That would make that absolutely awesome. So if I have a shell that I can take with me and that becomes my laptop, and then when I get home, I can take my phone and plug it into this, and this is my desktop, that would be fantastic. Well, I certainly have heated up the room because as you can hear, the uh, air conditioner just <laughs> turned on and I know that that's going to really get caught on the microphone so I'm going to stop it here hey please hit the subscribe button uh, it really encourages people who are doing podcasts to continue on these take a lot of time to put together and the editing and the music and to trying to make them interesting and to answer the questions so that you know you know is this something you want to get or is this something you don't want to get so for now this is the high-tech nomad signing off